Hey guys, Alex with Rapid Fire Rundown. Today, a really quick video for you all to uh, prove that I haven't fallen off the face of the planet. I want to discuss why we use Glocks and, and why many of us actually choose the Glock manufacturer as our main handgun and why some of us only use Glock handguns. So before we get into this video, Please like and subscribe if you enjoy this content. Comment down below if you have any questions. And comment down below if you disagree. And furthermore, comment down below if you have an alternative handgun manufacturer and why you prefer them. Okay, so in today's video, like the title suggests, we're going to talk about why myself and many others really stick to the Glock platform over the likes of the M&P 2.0 and CZ P10Cs, HK VP9s, insert whatever other brand you'd like. So let's get into it. The first and most important category is going to be reliability. So when the Glock pistol first erupted onto the scene, there really weren't many polymer handgun striker fired handguns on the market okay now glock came to the market and they knocked it out of the park and from there many other handgun manufacturers tried to replicate the, the success of the glock with you know diminishing returns or, or rather maybe their handguns weren't the most reliable okay i'm looking at you croatia um and glocks from the get-go have always had a reputation of being the most reliable striker fired handgun Nowadays, do I think the Glocks are likely still the most reliable? Yes, I actually do, but I don't know by how much, right? The M&P 2.0 and the VP9s and all these other handgun manufacturers are just utterly reliable nowadays, okay? So if you do choose to carry one of them, do understand that you are getting my, my full endorsement. But Glocks are just shown time and time again to always perform and to really always run in the most austere of conditions, okay? Now, if you pay attention to channels like Sage Dynamics or you look at like class statistics, you'll actually see that in a lot of these, these breakdowns, um, First of all, they will they will categorize and, and, and tally up the amount of like handgun malfunctions that happen in those classes. Glocks still, generally speaking, are at the very top of the most reliable handguns that instructors see today. Okay, so that is the first reason why Glocks immediately get my my approval. Now, furthermore, um, a lot of people, and you, you've probably heard this before, well, I'm just going to use what, what the cool guys use, okay? Special operations, we moved away from the 1911, the Beretta M9, all the way into like Glock 17s and Glock 19. Special operations can be found using Glocks, as well as many other handgun manufacturers, like the 2011 as an example, right? Which is a lot more finicky of a platform. But... The Glock is used by the cool guys, and because of that, people say, well, if it's good enough for them, it's likely good enough for me. And there's a little bit of merit to that, right? If someone that is putting their, their life in harm's way chooses a platform over another, maybe you should look at that and say, okay, well, their, their personal experience on the platform has led them to this decision, and therefore, if I also have a, a similar determination, a similar decision, I can't really be wrong, can I? And like I said, there's a little bit of truth to that. The Glock is known for its reliability, and while it is slowly getting... The other manufacturers are either getting closer and closer to it, or rather, are as reliable, right? If uh, you follow Garantham, you'll see that the M&P 2.0 is crushing ice tests and mud tests, and I mean, between you and me, let's be real, they all were just as reliable as each other. We're talking the most minuscule of differences between them all. But regardless, um, Glock just still has a longer track record, and Glock has been trusted for many, many years to the point where people no longer need to worry about if their Glock is going to work. They can just trust that it will. Okay. Now, the second topic of conversa conversation, the second reason for why people choose Glocks is going to be aftermarket, right? Similar to 1911s and 2011s, the aftermarket for Glocks is just absolutely massive. Without a doubt, the largest aftermarket handgun currently supported. Now, because of that, 
you can turn a Glock 19 into a Roland build with a million different ways of doing so. You can have one of 150 different compensators, one of 150 different barrels, different triggers, different sights, different mag wells. The Glock 19, Glock 17, Glock whatever, double stacked usually is the most supported, um, just allows you to do whatever you want to it. Now, funny enough, the further you get away from Gaston's perfection, the farther from reliability you're getting, right? My MR920 is beautifully reliable, but you can see some builds online that, you know, once you start putting in the tin parts made by uh, Zafari Precision and whatnot, uh, you'll notice their, their quality dips pretty heavily, okay? But that is a large benefit of the Glock platform, is if you want to do something to it, you can do something to it with a million manufacturers that are, are, are supporting the Glock platform. When you move over to the M&P, or you move over to the VP9, which once again are extremely popular platforms, but their aftermarket is infinitesimal com compared to the Glock platform, okay? Go try to do stuff to your VP9. You're going to see there really aren't many choices. Once again, I love the VP9 and I love the M&Ps, but you will just notice that Glock's aftermarket is just significantly better. Now, third of all, and this is going to go back a little bit into the reliability category, but that's going to be magazines. So Glock does something fairly unique. Glock has a metal magazine with a plastic shell around it that's supposed to help with corrosion, shock resistance, all of that. Because of that, it can actually uh, negatively impact capacity, right? You see handguns nowadays like the, like the SIG Macro that have significantly higher capacity per the size, but Glock's magazines are utterly reliable. And as many of you know, the magazine is generally speaking the the issue point of many firearms. 2011s, right? We're just going to keep picking on them. 2011s, the reason why 2011s have any issues whatsoever is usually in induced by the magazine. They're just a little bit more finicky. Glock magazines are stupidly reliable. And furthermore, they're cheap, which is a massive benefit. Let's take a look at SIG. If any of you guys own SIG M17s, M18s, P320s, SIG magazines can start at 50 bucks. They can go up to 80 bucks, depending on the extensions you're looking for. Whereas Glock, for a quality Glock magazine, you're really looking between 20 and $30 max. And then P mags, so Magpul mags, actually make Glock mags for $10 that a lot of people don't trust. And I get that, but. They have, I, I've, I've seen them to be utterly reliable, and my MR920 platform actually recommends you utilize Magpul magazines. So Glock magazines are just so utterly reliable and cheap that it is a, a, a very significant pro for the Glock. Now, another reason why Glocks are used is just they have everything you want out of the box, but with some exceptions I'll get into, but none of the frills that we also don't want, okay? Now, what I mean by that is a Glock out of the box, a Glock 19, you can bring that to the range, and you can immediately, without even lubing it, really, you can put 500 rounds down the pipe. The iron sights are adequate. Iron sights, in air quotes, are actually made out of plastic, but the iron sights are adequate. You can change those, and you probably should change them, even though it's not mandatory. Don't listen to everyone out there saying you have to replace Glock sights. I really recommend it, but you don't have to. You're not, you know, we're not tier one operators rolling on the ground, banging our sights into metal all day. You're, the plastic sights are fine, guys. Um, the trigger is perfectly adequate. It's a great trigger pull if you get used to it. The grip is perfectly adequate. It's not too abrasive. It's not too uh, non-abrasive, so you can still get a good grip on the gun. But, you know, it's it's a great middle ground, okay? There's not stupid slide cuts everywhere that a lot of manufacturers do that look very tactical and, frankly, cringe, right? Uh, M&Ps. I think M&Ps are the ugliest guns out there. People make fun of Glocks because they look like bricks. I don't give a shit. I don't want my, my my gun to look like some Ferrari race car with a bunch of weird like scallops everywhere and uh, and like fish scales. I think M&Ps are ugly as sin. Same with a lot of HK guns, okay? Now Glocks, Glocks look utilitarian. They're blocky. They're a brick 
with a a a hole for the the bullet casing to eject out the the right side of the handgun and they have front slide serrations right and that's it and that's beautiful to many people myself included it looks like a professional's tool and once again i'm not digging at the mnp this is all personal preference but this is a a benefit People, if you are not attracted to your firearm, you know, I'm not trying to be weird about it, but if you don't think your firearm looks, you know, like not cringe, then you may shoot it more. And I shoot my Glocks more, more than I would uh, some blinged out gold and purple uh, Zafri gun, because, hey, I, th I think they look great. They're great looking guns. Another great reason to purchase a Glock is going to be holster compatibility as well as parts commonality. We all have these visions of the end times, right? The zombie apocalypse where we're rummaging around and we're looking for ammo. And everyone, <laughs> this conversation always happens. Oh, should I have an ACOG for the end times? Ah, I don't know. I think water filtration is probably a lot more important. But, you know, if these end times ever do happen, the Glock 19 is everywhere. And you're going to be able to find parts for it everywhere. Slides, ammo, magazines, holsters everywhere. Back to holsters, every company on the planet, when they start making their, their holsters, their first holsters, I'd be willing to bet 90% of the time they're immediately making a Glock 19 holster because the Glock 19 is just so popular that you'd be stupid not to. The CZP-10C was modeled after the Glock 19 for a reason, guys. There's a reason they made it fit in Glock 19 holsters, and it's because the Glock 19 is the most popular handgun, all right? This is a massive bonus when you're trying to get your first handgun or you buy a new handgun and you're looking for that initial setup. You want to buy some extra mags, your first holster, you want to put a red dot on it, and you just know that every company out there is going to have something that fits that platform. Okay? Now, the last reason for the Glock platform being many people's favorite, as well as mine, is Glock's lack of innovation. Let's take a step back for a moment. In today's world, we're kind of at the point with firearms where innovation is very stagnant. And innovation is great, but we haven't had a breakthrough kind of moment very recently, in my opinion. When Eugene Stoner created the AR-15, that was a groundbreaking invention. We, we moved from wood and steel <laughs> ARs uh, into space age polymers, and everyone thought we were crazy, right? When Gaston Glock, and well, there were plastic uh, firearms before made by like HK, but when we moved from the 1911 and steel and aluminum firearms into, once again, space age polymer Glock platforms, everyone thought it was going to be a bad idea, but it, it completely revolutionized the game, okay? Glock, since then, since the initial innovation, they have chosen really not to innovate at all. And for myself and a lot of others, that's a that's that's great. That's best case scenario. Now, I'm going to pick on a manufacturer here, Sig Sauer. We all know that Sig Sauer is, um, you know, they, they won the military contract for the MHS program with the M17 and the M18, and we all know how well that's going. There's new issues every single week. The Sig Sauer subreddit is on fire every single week because every single week a new P320 discharges into an officer's leg or discharges in general, and everyone is coping over there saying, oh, it's not the gun's fault. I don't know, guys. When there's dozens of reports in the first couple years of a gun coming out, maybe it is the gun's fault, but I digress. Sig Sauer and many other companies are constantly trying to reinvent the wheel and they're beta testing on their customers. Once again, I'm going to pick on Sig. I have an MCX. They came out with the MCX Spear LT, which is a slightly lighter MCX, and they're going to drop a lot of compatibility with a lot of different parts and triggers and Guys, it gets kind of old when you buy into a platform and they drop support for that platform. A lot of other companies do this. I'm going to look at Smith & Wesson. Smith & Wesson is a lot less egregious, but Smith & Wesson has a ton of different products, a ton of different M&Ps that all are like dimensionally completely different. They're completely different guns, and there's a million of them. And this isn't necessarily a con, 
but one huge benefit of Glocks, and you'll see this on like the Glock subreddit as an example, is the Glock 19, while there is technically generational differences between them, it's largely the same fucking gun. So when you buy the gun, you know that you have the the Glock, the, the compact Glock for the next 10, 20 years, and you never need to like upgrade, you never need to really change anything. A lot of gener uh, generations and Glocks are actually completely interchangeable, okay? So that is a massive pro to the Glock platform, is you know that the company isn't going to drop support for the handgun in a couple years, and you're going to be sore out of luck, right? The Glock 19 is here, and the Glock 19 is here to stay. Eventually, 20 years down the line, are they going to make a 19 Gen 10 that may not 100% be compatible with like Gen 3 and Gen 5? Yeah, maybe. But Glock has shown that their lack of innovation has led to a extremely pleased customer base that knows that, you know, we're, we're with a manufacturer that cares about putting out a good product and not beta testing on its customers. Okay. Those are some of the reasons why I choose Glocks. If you have reasons, I want you to comment down below. I'd love to hear it. And if you have a company that you think I'm kind of overlooking or I'm being too tough on, I'd like to hear it too. Once again, these are opinions, and I don't hate any of these companies I'm, I'm speaking about today. All right. Once again, this video is just to prove to you guys that I haven't completely fallen off the, place of the uh, face of the earth. I'll upload more videos in the very near future. It's been great as always, and I'll see you in the next one.